Hello everyone and welcome to the Empowering People International Broadcast. My name is Dr. Stanley Williams and this is my beautiful wife, Dr. Bettina Williams. We want you to know that the devil is defeated and Jesus is Lord. He's the God of all seasons. That means that miracles are happening no matter what the season is, even in our hour, God is still a supernatural God. God has called you to victory and triumph. In fact, he's coming back for a glorious church, not a defeated, broke down, frustrated, defeated church, but he's coming back for a church that is full of glory, power, and authority. The Bible says that in the last days, perilous times will come. We're living in that day and that hour, but God wants for you to arise and shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Get ready for a word that is going to reflect the glory and the power that God has released in your direction. It's a setup for your greatest hour of victory. Let's go to the word. Well, God bless you and welcome to our broadcast today. I'm Dr. Beth Tina Williams and I'm here with Apostle Dr. Stanley Williams, my husband. Praise God for almost 40 years. I mean, the time is passing. The time is passing. Where has the time gone? As my mother would say, God is good and his mercy endure forever. It's a joy to be able to share the word of God with you. And we're going to continue in the series of messages that we're speaking on and ministering to you about concerning expectation of miracles by the Holy Ghost, expecting the Holy Spirit to minister in your life, to move in your life in a supernatural way. Even as a believer, if you're saved and you have him on the inside of you, you can expect God to use you for his glory, that miracles didn't end or cease with the with Jesus Christ and the 12 disciples who became the apostles of the Lamb and the 72 others who were beyond them. But miracles continue today. I'm a firm believer. I've seen it for myself. I've seen God heal cancer. I've seen God remove tumors. I've seen him do it multiple times. I've seen God heal the sick. I've seen uh, uh, demons cast out of people. I've seen the supernatural power of God even to save souls. To save a soul is the greatest miracle of all. So as you hear the word of God today, I want you to take it personal. I want for you to believe God for your miracle and believe God beyond that to use you for his glory so that somebody else will hear the gospel and be delivered, healed, saved, and set free. Let's go before the Lord's throne in prayer and then we're gonna turn it over into the hands of apostle. Father God, we honor you. We praise you and we bless your holy name. We thank you for the power of your presence indwelling us and that you're with us today. We thank you for the ministry and the presence of your Holy Spirit. We thank you that you have not left us and will never leave us. We thank you that your word is true and every promise you will do. We honor you today and we, we say, Holy Spirit reign. Come Holy Spirit, fill us and fill those who are watching in a new and living way. Let the refreshing rain and river of your spirit flow. Flow God, God in a mighty way, healing and delivering, setting captives free and making men whole for your glory, for your honor and for your praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Apostle. We welcome you to the broadcast today. And we share our love with you as yes, always. Yes. We love you with the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. And of course, you already know that God loves 
you. Yes. Today, you know, we're continuing our purpose, our purpose to challenge your faith, release our faith Amen. with you. Yes. And to create a great expectation for the supernatural. Mm -hmm. This is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Now, we've been talking about Jesus. I'm just going to say it, you know, in my way. Jesus is sort of painting outside the lines. He didn't stay with just the 12 apostles. He, he had anointed 72. And then we come to the deacons, Philip and Stephen, I mentioned, flowing in supernatural miracles. And then there's Saul of Tarsus. I want to read this passage to you. Listen to this. Acts chapter 9. Verse 17, Ananias was a little known apostle and he was flowing in miracles. Ananias, so Ananias departed after some resistance and entered into the house. He placed his hands on Saul and said, so Ananias believed in the laying on of hands. Mm -hmm. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came here, has sent me so that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from his eyes and he could see again. And he got up and was baptized. So you could mm -hmm. see the, 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 fill, the infilling of the Holy Spirit is separated from water baptism. Mm -hmm. So Paul received the power of God. He went... He went right out after that, and he preached Christ, convincing everyone that he was Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, now we come to the, you pronounce it, di dias diaspora, diaspora, diaspora. You're good. Because I always pronounce that wrong. Others who received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Listen, in Acts chapter mm -hmm. 4, we're looking at Philip ministering. Now, this is what the scripture says. Therefore, they were scattered abroad. That's the scattering. The apostles, they remained in Jerusalem. Everyone else scattered. Then Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them. In Acts chapter 6, verse, excuse me, Acts chapter 8, verse 6, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles that he did. Now, this was Philip the deacon. He was not an apostle. Unclean spirits came out of people crying with a loud voice. Miracles were happening everywhere. And I want to just tell you this. Now in the city, this is verse 9 of Acts chapter 8. Now in that city was a man named Simon who had been practicing magic and amazing the people of Samaria, claiming to be someone great. And all the people from the least to the greatest paid very close attention to him, saying, this man is the power of God that is called great. And they paid close attention to him because he had amazed them a long time with his magic. But when they believed Philip, as he was proclaiming the good news about the kingdom, about the kingdom mm -hmm. of God, and the name of Jesus Christ, they began to be baptized, both men and women. Even Simon himself believed. And after he was baptized, he stayed close to Philip constantly. And when he saw the signs and great miracles that were occurring, he was amazed. Now listen to this. This is verse 14 of Acts chapter 8. And I'm going to mm -hmm. pass it to my wife. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of the Lord, they had received salvation, mm -hmm. they had received water, water baptism. Now look. They sent Peter and John to them. Mm -hmm. These two went down and prayed for them that they may receive the Holy Ghost. So you could see the clear separation. Mm -hmm. He preached Christ to them. They accepted it. Mm -hmm. They were baptized in water. They accepted it. Mm -hmm. Then the apostles came down after they knew that they had received Christ and they received the Holy Ghost. That's where the power comes mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. And I love it because this scripture is letting us know, the word of God is telling us and letting us know that the Holy Spirit comes without price. You don't need any gimmicks. 
You don't need any, any, anything to add to God. You don't, he don't need no help. Amen. You don't need gimmicks. You don't need potions, all this kind of stuff, uh, all this kind of trinkets. You don't need anything to, 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 to have the presence, the ministry to receive the miracle work and power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. All you need is to believe. All you have to do is have faith in God and know that God is who he said he is and he can and will do what he said he will do. In this day and time, Apostle, you have a lot of um, people that they want, they, they earnestly want the hand of God. They want the ministry of the Lord, the Holy Spirit mm. to, to flow and to operate in their lives or even to touch them, to heal them. But we have a lot of things that happen today that I will say are counterfeit or potions and lotions and trinkets and all of this stuff. And you got to pay and buy, pay money to get it and all this kind of stuff. You have to be careful with that because as the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 8 and starting with verse 18, it says, now when now Simon, when he saw that the spirit was given through the laying on of the hands of the apostles, he offered them money. Give me this power too, so that everyone I place my hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. And this is, this is what it says in the message translation about it in Acts chapter 18, chapter eight. It says in verse 18, when Simon saw that the apostles by merely laying on hands conferred the spirit, he pulled out his money, excited and said, sell me your secret. Be careful now. Listen to this. Sell me now. Sell me your secret. Show me how you did that. How much do you want? Now your price. Peter said to hell with you, to hell with your money and you along with it may why that's unthinkable. He's saying, Peter's responding to Simon. Mm -hmm. He's saying, why that's unthinkable, trying to buy God's gift. You'll never be part of what God is doing by striking bargains and offering bribes. Change your ways and now. Ask the master to forgive you for trying to use God to make money. I can see this is an old habit with you. You reek with money lust. This is where we are today. We have to be mindful that the gift of the Holy Spirit is a promise. It's a gift. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to bargain for it. You don't need no trinkets, potions, or lotions. You don't need anything. You don't have to exchange money for the miracle working power of the Holy Spirit. All you need is faith in God. And all you need is to believe God and look unto him and look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, and know that he said that he will give you the Holy Ghost. He will give you his Holy Spirit and he will be with you. He'll be in you. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. He'll help you. He'll comfort you. He'll strengthen you. And he will never leave you. He will always be with you. You need to know that so that as you are believing God to minister and move in your life, desperate people do desperate things. And sometimes that gives place to be and taken advantage of. You can, you can give by faith your tithe and your offering to God, but you never have to buy a miracle. You never have to exchange money for the power of God to be manifest in your life. Now, after you believed and after you have received the blessing of God and seen your faith manifested in healing or deliverance or miracle or whatever it may be that you're believing God for, you may want to sow a seed into the ministry or into someone's life that ministered to you, but you don't have to give money to get a miracle. You don't have to pay for the Holy Spirit to move in your life. He comes as a gift, beloved. 
He comes as a gift child of God. He comes because your heavenly father loves you unconditionally and you cannot buy or earn his love. You cannot uh -uh. buy the ministry of the Holy Spirit. This promise is unto you and your children. And the Bible says in Acts chapter two, is to those who are many off or off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. He loves you. And yes, he sent he his did. Holy Spirit after Jesus Christ to heal you, to be with you, to walk with you, to talk with you, to guide you and to always be there. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother and you don't have to pay for it. It's a gift. I'd like to encourage every one of you to begin to seriously meditate in the word of God. Remember what the Psalmist David said. If you meditate in the word day and night, you'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. I believe that everything that you set your hands to do will prosper. And I believe that God is interested in your prayer life. Develop that prayer life. Begin to stand up in God's face and begin to declare the word of God. God loves it when he's in communication with his people. In Jesus' name. This is an exciting time in history. We are seeing the word of God unfold and come into full manifestation every day, just watching the news. So I wanna encourage you, get your news from the original source. Stay in the word of God daily. And as you stay in the word of God, enjoying with daily communion and prayer, talking to the Father, he will show you things to come and he will manifest his power to you. In fact, God has ordained for you to be in the driver's seat. He's ordained for you to be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, blessed and not cursed. God wants for you to be a difference maker and a change agent. In other words, God has put you in a position of power and authority because we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And he's ordained for you to walk a life of victory in the word. Let's go back to the word of God. God is not asking you for money to be empowered by the Spirit. I yes. agree. That is a beautiful yes. statement. Yes, amen. So, so far we've looked at 72. We've looked at the deacons. We, we've looked at Saul of Tarsus. Now let's look at Acts chapter 19, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I want you to stretch your faith. Miracles are still happening today. Yes, yes. Acts Amen. chapter 19, verse 1. And it came to pass when Apollos, now we're dealing with Apollos, mm -hmm. who was not one of the people in the upper room. He got saved later. Yes. Apollos was at Corinth. Mm -hmm. Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? So yes, they yes. had received Christ yes. as Savior. Mm -hmm. And they said unto him, we, not, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. And then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come, mm -hmm. that is, on Christ. Now, here, here the apostle, they realized that they've been baptized into mm -hmm. John's baptism. Yes. So they knew about Christ. Right. So now, in Acts chapter 19, verse 5, it says this. When they heard this, they, they baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes, so they're they finishing were. it. They were, they're yeah. finishing it. Now, in, in verse 6, it says, and when they had laid hands on them, this is after mm -hmm. baptizing them into Jesus. Paul. Paul laid hands on them. And the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and 
prophesied. So yes. they, he followed the progression. He asked them, what were you baptized to? They said, John's baptism. So he rebaptized them in the name of Jesus and laid hands on them afterwards. And they, they yeah. spoke in tongues and prophesied. Yes. And I want to end like this and I want to pass it back to my wife because this is something that's extremely important that I mention. Now, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. was not relegated to the first century. You mentioned it. The, the promise is not only to, uh, was not only to them. That's very important. Mm -hmm. The promise was to them, mm -hmm. their children's children, yes, their children, their children's children, their children's children, mm -hmm. and all those that are were far off, that's in the future, mm -hmm. And even as many as the Lord thy God shall call. So he is saying that this gift is for the church in all ages. Mm -hmm. Right now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is here ministering the same as he was ministering in the first century. The power is here. God only wants faith. Mm -hmm. Where faith exists, yes, yes, all the possibilities for healing exist. And nothing, if you have faith, just if even if it's just the size of a grain of mustard seed, you can say to a mountain, move mm -hmm. and be cast into the midst of the sea. All you have to do is just trust God, no doubt in your heart. And, you know, this is good because I remember as a child, all you need is simple childlike faith. Simple childlike faith. Simple childlike faith. You only need simple faith. And as a child, I remember how I just was so hungry for God. I was actually only four years old. Yes. But I was raised in church. I was raised with the word preached with power and authority. And I saw miracles. Yes. I saw the ministry of the Holy Spirit frequently and regularly in the church that I grew up in in Texas. I, my pastor, my father operated in the power the ministry of the Holy Spirit, yes, amen. And so as a child, I was hungry for that. I was hungry for him. And I remember how I was baptized and I spoke in tongues. And I'm telling you the joy, the joy of mm. praying, amen. The joy of praying in the spirit, the joy of being filled with and baptized in the Holy Spirit, the joy of having him minister in my life and to see God minister through my life as I grew up. And I began to exercise my faith in prayer for others and, and see God work miracles. There is nothing like it. And I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you to hunger and thirst after him. Desire the Holy Spirit that he will minister in your life. Desire, if you have not been baptized, we want to encourage you, reach out to us if you're in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Go to our ministry website at empoweringpeople.us and let us know, I want to be baptized. I want to know the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. I want to know about what you're talking about. I want to experience him. I want to experience the miracle working power of God. Let us know. Yeah. And, and, and if you don't live in this area, go to a believing, Bible-believing church that's full of faith where you can be baptized in the name of Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. And our identity is in Christ, with Christ our Lord. To be baptized in Jesus' name and to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit so that you can be empowered, walk in authority, and, and see God move through your life and in your life by faith. This thing is real. This is real. God is real. And he's here today. The young people, this young generation, you need to know that there's more to life than material things. You need to know that there's more to life than social media. You need to know that there's more to life than, than the, than the, um, the, the habits and the, uh, fads and things that are taking place today. You need to know that God is real. 
His power is awesome and there's nothing like him and receive the Holy Spirit. Apostle, let's pray for the people. Right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. I'm going to release my mm. faith for supernatural miracles. Yes, Lord. And whatever God tells me to pray for, yes. I want you to have faith for that. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm going to pray for joints, knees, muscles, ankles, things that hurt. I'm going to pray against chronic pain. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I invoke that name by faith, believing that your supernatural power is going to heal. There's someone right now that's struggling with chronic pain in their back, in their joints, their knees. They're the facing Jesus, possible knee replacement, hip replacement I surgery. I come against it in the name of Jesus. And even if you have to recreate cartilage, whatever you have to do, I release my faith for those miracles right now. I believe in the supernatural Yes, power Lord. of God. I believe Hallelujah. that God is Glory who he says he is. I believe mm, he will yes, do what he Jesus. says he'll do. So right now, while I'm releasing my faith, yes, stretch Lord. forth your hand to God. I am not the, the healer he is. And I want you to the trust God Jesus. for your miracle. Yes. Right now, right Father, now. in the name of Jesus, name of only Jesus. you can do it. Yes. We release our faith and we come into agreement for miracle after miracle after miracle yes. in Jesus', Jesus mighty name. name. Amen. And the greatest miracle is to receive Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior. Just ask him, Father God, I ask you to save me. I ask you to set me free. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son and I receive him into my heart as my Lord and my Savior to live for you for the rest of my life. I give myself to you. And as you pray that prayer, reach out to us. Connect with us today, and we encourage you to let us know that you were saved in mm. Jesus' name. God yes, bless you. Jesus. Believe God for miracles. God bless you. Amen. We want to thank you for being a part of our Empowering People International family. We so appreciate you. You are loved, and every soul that's impacted by this broadcast, you are a part of it. Remember that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to us. And as long as we have him, we have absolute victory. You have received the word of God today, and I want to encourage you to stand on it. Stand on the word of God and hold on to God because he's holding on to you. Believe God because he believes in you. He created you for victory. He created you for triumph. You shall not go down in defeat for one split second as long as you are standing on the rock of your salvation. And that's none other than Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is the Lord of the harvest. He is the Lord of victory. He's the Lord of triumph. And he is the Lord of the host of the armies of heaven. You're on the winning side. You're on God's side. Stand in the victory. God bless you.